Hey, this is Arkiv. Pokemon is a glorious game. It is life and it is love. So let's try to make it in Godot. All right, I have a new project opened here, but I do have some assets already imported. So I'll leave a link in the description so you can go ahead and download it and follow along. Let's start off by creating a 2D scene. And this scene can be our town or our map. So let's rename it to be town. And then let's go ahead and add a player scene. And for a player, let's try to use a kinematic body 2D. And let's rename this to player. Let's go ahead and save the town scene by pressing Control S and then click Save. And then within our player scene, let's add a new node and we'll add a sprite for our player. And then within sprite, let's drag in our sprite sheet. So it's under a player, and then we'll click and drag and put it into the texture field. And if you zoom in, so I don't have it here, but it might be blurry for you guys. So we can fix that by going to import and then disabling filter and then re-importing. So if you have any blur, you can fix it by that. Now let's go to the offset drop down here and let's click off centered. And then let's go to animation and let's adjust the V frames and H frames to be three each. Because as you notice, our sprite sheet has three frames across and three frames down. And now it should just show one image. Let's go over here and enable grid snap. If you hover over, it'll say use grid snap. You can also press shift G to enable it. And since Pokemon is generally 16 by 16 pixels, let's set our snap to that as well. So if we go to configure snap, let's change the eight by eight to 16 by 16. Now we can click and drag our player every 16 pixels. I'm also going to set the player offset in the Y direction to be negative four so that the player's feet will be touching the bottom of the tile. All right, now let's go back to the scene tab right here and let's click on player and control A to add a new node and let's add a collision shape, collision shape 2D. And within collision shape 2D, let's add a new shape. A new rectangle shape will work just fine. And let's go to transform and let's set the position eight by eight to center it within the 16 by 16 tile. And as you notice, it's kind of too small. So let's shrink it down. And now it completely fills the 16 by 16 tile. Now let's go ahead and save this player scene as its own scene. So let's click on player and right click and go to save branch as scene. And let's save that. So now it's separate from our town scene and we can click on this little icon here. And now let's go to the project settings. So project and project settings and let's find the window tab. So if we scroll down under display, there will be a window selection. So select that. And we want the width and height to be 320 by 180. Cause Pokemon is fairly low resolution and test width and test height can be scaled up by four. So you can just do 320 times four, which equals 1280 and 720, or you can do 180 times four. And let's scroll down and make sure that the mode under the stretch is set to 2D so that the pixels aren't stretched whenever the window is maximized. And let's click close. Now let's go back to the town scene. Let's save it and let's try running this. So let's click the play button. And now we can see our player on the window, but of course we can't move it right now. So we'll go ahead and implement that. And let's close out of this. Now for Pokemon, we want to have tile-based movement. We don't want to stop in between tiles. So there is a bit more logic to add versus just simple movement. So let's go to our player scene and let's add a script to it. Now let's start off by defining a few variables. So first let's define the player's walk speed. So we can do export var walk speed. And for now, let's just set it to be 4.0. And the export keyword allows us to change this variable value during runtime. So it'll be helpful later on. And then let's also define the tile size so we can use it in our code and we'll set it to be 16. 
Now let's create a variable called initial position. And let's default it to be a vector2 with x and y set to 0. This variable represents the player's position at their start tile before they moved on to another tile. And let's copy this and create another variable called input direction. And this just stores which direction the player is moving. And let's create another variable called is moving. So just a flag if the player is moving or is currently still. And one last variable called percent moved to next tile and we'll set it to be 0.0. .0. The range of this value will go from 0 to 1, which essentially represents a percentage. And this is helpful to interpolate between tiles so we know what position we should set the player to be. Now let's go to our ready function and let's initialize the initial position. And we can do this by setting it to be position. And this gets the position of the player. Let's delete this. And now let's create a new function called physics process. And this is called every frame. And within this function, there's going to be three cases that we want to handle. The first case is if the player is not moving. So is moving is set to false. And in this case, we just want to process any player input that we'll receive. So let's call a function called process player input. This function we would have to implement later on. The next case, else if, the input direction is not vector 2.0. So there is some sort of direction given. And in this case, we would want to call a helper function called move. And we'll implement this later on. And we should also pass in delta. The last case is the player is just idle and has just stopped moving. So we should set is moving back to false. Let's go ahead and implement the process player input function. So process player input. And here, let's get the player's direction. So first, let's check what the input direction is first. So input direction dot y. We want to ensure that it's 0 so that we can set input direction at x. So this ensures that we'll only move in one direction versus diagonally. So input direction dot x and to get this value we can do input dot is action pressed ui right let's go down ui right and then we'll subtract it from the same thing but ui left since these won't be whole numbers let's cast it to be integer so we'll get either values negative 1, 0, or positive 1. And let's do the same thing with the y direction. So we'll do if input direction dot x is equal to 0. So we'll ensure that we're only setting one direction. Let's copy over this part. And instead of ui right, we'll do ui down and ui up. So now that we've gotten any input, we can check if it's non-zero. So if the input direction is not vector two zero, then we can start moving. So we'll set the initial position. So we want to record the current tile and then also set is moving to be true. So in the next frame, it'll go down to the next branch and call move. And let's go ahead and implement the move function. So let's update the percent moved to next tile variable that we defined earlier. And this equals plus equals walk speed times delta. And delta is just the amount of time passed since the last frame. And if the percent is more than or equal to one, that means it's one whole tile moved then we can stop moving. But let's first ensure that the position of the player is the initial position plus tile size times the input direction. So tile size is 16, and input direction will be 1 or negative 1, depending on the direction. So they'll move a whole 16 pixels. 
And let's set back percent moved back to zero and is moving back to false. And let's work on the else case. Else, the position of the player is somewhere in between. So we're interpolating the position. So it'll still be tile size times input direction, but we should also multiply it by percent moved to next tile. And this value is less than one, so it'll cause this value to be less than 16. So it'll be somewhere in between. And that should be all. And we can go ahead and try running this. Full screen. So now we have tile based movement. Obviously, the player looks like they're not moving because they have no animations, but we'll add that in later on. Thanks for watching and take care. I'll catch you in the next video.